In this video, we're back to working on Smoky Red, but this time with a vengeance. This time, it's not here for a miss. It's here for, well, some bigger problems. And it might have started with the air compressor, but it may have wound up other places. Hey guys, Josh Reed Update Channel. And about a year ago, we had worked on a truck named Smoky Red. And Smoky Red had some engine problems, but we never actually got to work on it other than just troubleshooting it. A little bit of smoke. It's hard to tell though with the gray sky, but it definitely got a little bit of smoke. What we wanted to do was pull the head and find out why it was smoking, hence why it was named Smoky Red. That didn't happen. The reason that didn't happen is because they took it to another shop and had an independent shop do the rebuild, which can't blame them, but this is what happened a couple days after the independent shop did the rebuild though. Not saying this is caused by it, but they had a catastrophic air compressor failure. And you can see the front bearing there on the air compressor looks like that bearing failed. And now the problem with air compressor failures, folks, is they're gear driven. And when the air compressor gear gets damaged, well, so does the gear that's driving it. And since gears are contacting other gears, it just gets worse and worse. So here's the engine itself. You can see it looks like it was just recently painted and they had pulled the air compressor off themselves. And you can see, yeah, not just the air compressor gear was damaged. We've got other front gear train damage, which of course, where does all that metal go? Well, it goes into your oil pan and then it winds up in, of course, your oil system. So we're looking this over and just some other things I found with it, kind of unrelated. It looks like they painted the turbo possibly. You might be saying, oh, that's not factory. Well, they may, that might be a cat zip tie, folks. So can't really say it's not factory, but doesn't look factory to me. They seem to paint lots of stuff like the lower radiator hose, the radiator supports yellow too, which usually I just stick with the engine, but you know, an artist chooses his canvas. Now they also had removed the oil filter here and it, it's been left with the oil filter off, which generally if you're gonna be towing stuff, better to leave it with the filter on. Now, one thing I thought is weird is there's silicone on the front cover where the oil or the water pump goes, but not on the whole front structure. So it's like they put silicone in there. Now this is the shunt line. And that shunt line is completely pinched off, which is weird. And I've actually got a video there talking about the importance of the shunt line. Don't think this one has a mouse in it, but I had a video where there was a mouse in one of those and that caused some real catastrophic damage. Now, this had got towed in, like I said, and yeah, there's no oil in it. So it appears that the customer mechanic had drained the oil out themselves. At least I'm hoping that's what happened. But yeah, no oil, oil filter's been removed. And just to verify, because what we're gonna do here is before we go too crazy on getting the front structure off, we really need to take a look at the bearing. So we're gonna have to pull the oil pan. Now, even though it looks like they drained the oil, I just wanted to verify, and this has one of those quick trains. Now, I made a comment about the quick trains before, and some people seem to love them, and some people have sad horror stories of them opening while driving. Uh, it seems pretty rare, but obviously that would be bad. Now, you can see I got my Milwaukee 3.8 impact there, but I'm using this Air one. It seems like the little electrics, when you're using an extension or a wobbly, just do not put out the same amount of torque to get these valve cover, or not valve cover bolts. I hope we'd get valve cover bolts out. These are oil pan bolts out. So oil pan's been removed here, as you can see. And it's got some non-cat bolts here. Looks like it's been mixed and matched in. They're not rod bolts or anything, but looking to see what we can find in this oil pan and just seeing if we find any major other damage. What I can see, don't really see much. You can see the other, they've installed big washers on this non-cat bolts for some of the sump pickup and stuff. Looks like they had a little bit of a silicone party here. Probably just put a little bit of excess on it that squished off on there, putting the pan on, but. Here's our ladder plate, also known as a block stiffener plate. This is very important because engine blocks are pretty open on the bottom and these create so much torque that this stiffener plate is actually very important. It keeps the block from flexing. So you obviously do not ever want to put an engine together without putting one of these on. Sure, it has happened though in the past. Luckily, I have not done that. So oil pan off. Let's take a look and see what the heck is in here. Now, this may look like metal or something, but this appears to me to be coolant, actually. 
Now, I'm not sure why there is coolant in here unless something happened with the air compressor itself. It failed internally. Now, this is not coolant. That's obviously metal, which of course, all the metal from the gear train is gonna have gone into the pan. Now, they've drained the oil before, so not sure how much of that metal was lost by doing that, but obviously, there's a little bit of destruction going on here, folks. And this first part of the destruction of the week is not really destruction, but kind of a learning lesson here. So in experience, I will notice that a three section joint here, like on this oil pan, needs some silicone. And if you don't put it there, well, I, I know it looks like radioactive waste, folks, but it's just oil with dye in it using my UV beast, uh, UV light. So this next one's from Dale and he sent a video, two videos actually. This was actually on a rebuild engine and yeah, oil pans, you don't wanna see stuff like that. And you can see that piston basically disintegrated. The cooling jets bent around like a like a boomerang. Also the uh, oil pump, he said, only had one bolt holding it in. So bad news there on that one. Thank you to Dale for sending that one. And let's get back to work here. So I wanted to show you guys something. This is, if you look up real close at where your oil filter goes on a 3406 or a C15, you can actually see the bypass valves there, They're those brown items. One, of course, is your filter bypass, and then the other is your pressure relief bypass. So pretty interesting there. So we got the oil pump off here, and what we're looking for is the extent of the damage to the gear train. Of course, the oil pump is the farthest gear from the air compressor gear so if it's damaged probably all the other gears are i don't really see much damage on this couple little weird wear marks maybe some nicks now of course those might be from before you don't know someone said this has had hadn't had a gear failure i would say okay well this gear probably looks okay but giving it the good look over here so nothing really that weird on these. And actually when these oil pumps get replaced, they don't come with new gears. So this gear is probably original to the engine. And cat gears are quite expensive. So usually they are reused during a rebuild. And usually you're not doing much gear train work when you're doing a rebuild other than a cam gear and the oil pump gear. So this is the gear that drives the oil pump gear. And this is your main crank gear. And you can see what they call either the tone ring or the reluctor ring. It's on the front and you can see the crank timing or position sensor there. So it doesn't actually read the gears, it's reading that reluctor ring, but don't see any damage to the main crankshaft gear here. Of course, we can only see about half of it. And we're also seeing if this was done with cat part numbers. And as far as I can tell, it was cat parts. And one thing they didn't do though, was mark which rod was going where. So I wrote the five and five there. You don't want to mix and match your rod caps with your rods, so that's why you do that. Usually you engrave them when you're doing the rebuild, but this person didn't do that. So what we're doing here is a lot of metal went through this engine, and we want to see, did it damage the bearings? And if metal did get into the bearings, did it damage the crankshaft? If the crank journals and the gears are damaged, at that point, you're kind of looking at a long block or a complete engine, of course you can pull the crankshaft out, get it polished or ground and put it back in or get a new crank. But once you add up the cost of the gears and a crankshaft and all the labor, you're usually looking at a long block. So the lower portion, the rod cap bearing there, or the lower portion of the rod bearing there is not in great shape, but of course the lower portion is not the load bearing side. Now you can see there, I'd taken my glove off to see the finish and the crank journal is scratched. Not super heavy, but a lot of, you can feel it's not smooth anymore. Now, when you're pushing up the rod like that to pull the bearing out, you always wanna make sure that the cooling jet is out. Now, I had pulled the cooling jets on two and five rods because I knew I was gonna be pulling those because they're very easy to bend, and if you bend them, it can destroy the engine. So since the upper part of the rod bearing is the one that holds the load, if this part is bad, it's a really bad sign. Now the crank, we already know it's scratched up, so not good news, but there's our upper bearing. As you can see, a lot worse than the lower one, and pretty bad. So we're gonna check another one, just to make sure this isn't a fluke, but 
with it looking so scratched up and with gear damaged and with metal in the pan pretty bad news so this this was a cat cat registered uh standard size bearing there too so i pulled number two cap and number five five was the one we were showing you there and yeah it was just as bad as five so unfortunately even though this engine had just been rebuilt and these bearings only had a couple hours on them basically at this point unless they want to spend a ton on labor a long block is probably unless they want to go with a complete engine their best option here Unfortunate to see this on Smoky Red, but I will keep you up to date on what goes on with this engine. Like, thanks everyone for watching, and thanks for watching.